Caffeine can pretty much be found everywhere from almost any store, restaurant, work environment, or school, hidden in foods and drinks that you may not even be aware of. But how safe is it to consume, and what effects does it have on your body and brain? Let's find out. But first of all, what exactly is it? Caffeine is a stimulant that increases activity in your brain and nervous system, but also increases the circulation of certain chemicals within your body like cortisol and adrenaline, which can trigger the fight or flight symptoms, basically increasing your high sensory awareness. When you think of caffeine, you might think of coffee, as it's well known for containing high amounts of caffeine sourced from coffee beans. But caffeine can also be found naturally from many other sources like in certain types of tea and cacao beans, meaning not just coffee and tea have caffeine, but even chocolate as well. Popular products like Nutella, Oreos, cereal, and ice cream can have small amounts of caffeine, while some coffee-flavored ice creams can have as much as 50 milligrams of caffeine per serving. That's more than a 12-ounce can of Coke, but not all caffeine is found naturally. Caffeine as a supplement in pill or powder form will most often come from chemical synthesis made in a lab, and is the type of caffeine you'll find in most sodas and energy drinks. And the consumption of coffee is nothing new. Before coffee and soda, dating back as far as the Paleolithic period centuries ago, people ingested caffeine while eating certain plants. It wasn't until the 14th century during the Ming Dynasty that tea became popular, and then later in the 15th century that coffee became more widespread. Today, approximately 90% of all adults in the world consume caffeine on a daily basis. But why do we need it? When you consume caffeine, it affects many different systems within your body. In your nervous system, caffeine blocks the effects of a chemical compound called adenosine, a neurotransmitter responsible for making you feel sleepy, having you feel more alert and allowing you to stay awake. This is why people who are tired and need to stay awake to drive or work choose to consume drinks with high caffeine contents. But also why if it's late at night and you're planning to go to bed soon, you should avoid consuming anything with caffeine as the increased brain activity will make it very difficult for you to fall asleep. Caffeine is also a go-to in the mornings for so many wanting to feel more focused and productive due to the improved cognitive abilities like improved concentration and memory as well as the mental clarity that caffeine provides. Caffeine can also improve your mood and promote feelings of happiness as dopamine. A chemical in your brain responsible for making you feel happy is released in response to consuming caffeine. This is actually the reason that caffeine was proven to help some individuals suffering from depression. Among fitness enthusiasts, caffeine is also a very popular supplement. Not only can it provide athletes with improved endurance, strength, and overall performance in that it allows you to push harder while reducing perceived exertion, it also assists with the breakdown of fat and fat cells allowing you to burn more calories. And though caffeine doesn't directly increase muscle mass, it can help preserve muscle glycogen stores during exercise by increasing the availability of fatty acids for energy. It was for these athletic benefits that the Olympics banned high concentrations of caffeine performance. Caffeine is also a prominent ingredient found in so many weight loss supplements due to its ability to boost your metabolism while suppressing your appetite, making it easier to control calorie intake, but also promotes fast water weight loss with its diuretic properties. Caffeine also has medicinal benefits. Some medical conditions like asthma, migraines, and low blood pressure have been managed with caffeine, but not all the side effects of caffeine are wanted. Caffeine can affect your heart by causing abnormal heart rhythms or temporarily increase your heart rate if you consume too much, and even temporarily cause high blood pressure, while excessive consumption can lead to negative effects like insomnia, jitterness, dehydration, and dependency. So to avoid these unwanted effects, individuals choosing to take caffeine should stick to the recommended daily intake, though this can vary depending on many factors, such as age, health conditions, and individual sensitivity. Generally, most guidelines would suggest that most adults can safely consume 400 milligrams of caffeine per day without experiencing any harmful effects to their health. This would be the equivalent of about four eight ounce cups of coffee, four eight ounce cups of tea, or 10 cans of 12 ounce sodas. And while the guidelines suggest 400 milligrams per day is safe, it's recommended you don't exceed 200 milligrams of caffeine within a four hour window if you want to avoid jitters, anxiety, and excessive adrenaline. But there's still individuals who should avoid caffeine. Pregnant women are often advised to have no more than 200 milligrams of caffeine daily, while most pediatric guidelines will say there is no proven safe amount for kids under the age of 12. Teens, on the other hand, can have up to 100 milligrams per day, which for context would be equivalent to one cup of coffee or two sodas. And while we know caffeine can have some unwanted side effects, consuming high doses can lead to very serious health issues such as caffeine toxicity and even overdose, which in extreme cases can lead to seizures, cardiac arrhythmias, and even death. The exact amount of caffeine that would cause someone to overdose would vary from person to person, but consuming more than 400 to 600 milligrams of caffeine in a short period can definitely increase the risks of these effects. 
especially for individuals who are not accustomed to taking high doses of caffeine or those who have underlying health conditions. Mixing caffeine with alcohol or some medications have also been causes for a caffeine overdose. But most people consuming such high doses of caffeine in such a short time are not new to caffeine. They're usually people who've built a tolerance towards caffeine over time and require more caffeine than what they previously required to reach the same desired effects. This of course puts them at a greater risk for the negative effects like anxiety, irritability, disruption of sleep, and dependency. It's actually been found that a caffeine dependency can develop in as little as three days from as low as 100 milligrams per day, with the dependency increasing as the streak continues. As your body gets accustomed to daily caffeine intake, your brain adjusts to the presence of caffeine by producing fewer adenosine receptors. With fewer receptors, the effects of adenosine are diminished, leading to increased wakefulness and alertness. And if caffeine consumption is reduced or stopped suddenly, withdrawal symptoms can occur in the form of headaches, fatigue, and difficulty concentrating in as little as 24 hours without caffeine. This is why if wanting to stop or reduce caffeine intake after building a dependency, you'd want to do so gradually while ensuring you're staying hydrated and avoiding caffeine at least six hours before bed to ensure you can get enough quality sleep. Exercising and practicing healthy lifestyle habits can not only make the transition off caffeine easier, but also reduces the reliance on caffeine for its energy and alertness benefits. So should you take caffeine? Well, based on the statistics, you probably already do to some extent. But if you're looking to improve your productiveness, fight off drowsiness, or improve your athletic performance by adding or increasing your daily caffeine intake, as with most things, moderation is key. Understanding your own tolerance and health needs should be considered above all else. While caffeine can be a powerful tool when used responsibly, you should still consider the fact that you will eventually build a tolerance to its effects, potentially exposing you to unwanted risks later on. So can you achieve the same results without caffeine? Well, that depends. While you can certainly use your willpower to an extent to stay awake when tired, caffeine's effects on your brain's adenosine will likely be more effective than willpower alone. But when it comes to physical performance, regardless of caffeine's effects on your central nervous system, metabolism, and adrenal glands, if you don't have the willpower to put in the work already, the caffeine isn't going to do it for you either. And if you do want to start building more muscle while simultaneously burning more calories, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with bell notifications on. I've made many videos on nutrition to get you absolutely shredded, making weight loss easy. You can check some of these videos right here. And for full access to all our workout programs, getting you in the best shape of your life, make sure to download the Harrier Pro app in the App Store or Google Play Store. And if you enjoyed the video, definitely smash that like button. Leave a comment down below what you want to see in the next video or what topic you'd like us to break down next in a video just like this and check out this video right here that I know you're gonna love and I'll see you next Tuesday 11 a.m. USA Eastern Time. Mad love baby.